Hello class, in this video we will see some of the social costs and inefficiency of having monopolies in society. Let's start off by comparing a monopoly to a perfectly competitive market. We must go back to something we have learned during our lecture on perfect competition. That is, that my marginal cost curve becomes my supply curve for the individual firm after the possible points of production. Hence, I label this my supply curve for the individual firm. If this was a perfectly competitive market, this means that my equilibrium between my demand and my supply would tell me what the market price and the market quantity are. So under a perfectly competitive structure, this is my quantity and I will label that QPC. I can also know my price and I will label that price under perfect competition PC. Furthermore, we can label our consumer surplus using this graph. Remember that consumer surplus is everything above price and below demand. So under perfect competition, my consumer surplus looks something like this. Now, instead of perfect competition, we will look at this with a monopoly. Since this is a monopoly, we have to look at this as an individual firm. And we know that individual firms maximize their profits at the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. We find that here. Therefore, we are able to figure out how much the individual monopoly will produce in this market. Hence, we see our first problem with a monopoly. Under a monopoly, we see less production. Let's take a look at the price. As you have seen in previous videos and in your reading, a monopoly will charge a higher price than what is seen here. Since a monopoly is able to follow the demand that it faces, it will end up charging a price that is on the demand curve, shown here. A monopolist knows that for QM, people are willing to pay a price of PM. And hence, we see our second problem with a monopoly. A monopoly charges a higher price than what we would see under perfect competition. Furthermore, since the price under a monopoly market structure is higher, this means that consumer surplus is going to get reduced. 
it goes from the consumer to the monopoly in the form of profit. For now, let's just analyze what happens to consumer surplus. If the price of the product increases, the consumers lose surplus. Consumer surplus will get reduced by the red area and the only portion that now belongs to the consumers in the form of surplus is the green area. A monopoly causes dead weight loss. Notice that our quantities are decreased. So that means that there are missing transactions. You can think of this as missing transactions that we would have if this market operated under perfect competition. We will get those transactions by subtracting QPC minus QM. And it's the horizontal distance between these two lines. Our dead weight loss will be represented by a triangular area. Shown here. In summary, a monopoly takes surplus from the consumer and transforms it into profits for the monopoly. A monopoly will also cause inefficiency in the form of dead weight loss. There is also another possible type of inefficiency that we see in monopolies. Let's go ahead and draw our marginal cost and ATC curve on this graph. I have gone ahead and labeled two important points for this monopoly. The green point is your profit maximization point. Remember that at this point, we are able to figure out what the quantity for the monopoly is as well as the price. The other point on this graph represents the minimum average total cost for the firm. I will label it as my quantity at ATC minimum, meaning that when this company produces at QATC min, it is actually minimizing its costs. Now, why is this an issue? You will remember that in perfect competition, all firms make a normal profit in the long run, meaning that in the long run, the ATC curve, the marginal cost curve, and the marginal revenue curve all intersect in the same place meaning that in the long run, all firms operating under perfect competition will minimize their costs. This does not occur for a monopoly. And what we see happening here is that the difference between QATC and QM can be described as excess capacity.